I think a lot of agencies get it wrong is they're quoting everything and they're selling a little bit, which is a waste. I think it helps bring up the points we need throughout the process and reminds us exactly what we need to do or say. You didn't think outside the box. You didn't ask for additional lines. You literally just asked questions and then spent an hour quoting when we could have done a lot more or built a better relationship or streamlined something. All right, everybody, we're back and we're talking all about new business process. And my personal opinion is most agencies have a quote process, not a sales process. And so we detail out how to quote, who to quote, what to quote, when to quote. But then I still think people do their own thing. Like still blows my mind and personalize. A lot of agencies don't use raters, which is crazy to me personally. They have their reasons. They think I'm crazy. So one of us is mm-hmm. right. One of us is wrong. One of us is in 2024, though. <laughs> Others are not. But I think when you think about new business, it's uh, an expense until we convert. And so I always like to remind people that you need to build your new business process to drive the highest closing ratio, make the most amount of money, or figure out when to walk away. I think a lot of agencies get it wrong is they're quoting everything and they're selling a little bit, which is a waste. And this is where everybody gets the B word, right? And that is true. They are busy. They're busy doing the wrong things when they should be productive, quoting the right stuff and having the best sales process to spend time with those people. So Therese, what do you think? What do you think is the importance every agency has of having that new business process? I think we have to have this process so everybody's remembering. I think sometimes at four o'clock on a Friday afternoon, you get that phone call of somebody wanting a quote and your head is like gone. You're like, oh, you're already in the weekend and you forget what you need to do. So I think it helps bring up the points we need throughout the process and reminds us exactly what we need to do or say. Usually, and we have one that has scripts And by the time you've used it over and over again, I think you get to the point where you memorize those scripts and you find your way to do it. But you need to make sure that your agents are using the value proposition, the agency proposition for your agency. So they're introducing your agency. You know, they're explaining what an independent agent is. We do secret shopper calls. And I can't tell you how many times the secret shoppers say they didn't introduce the agency. They didn't build any value in the agency. Or they don't Um, say their own name. Right, right. Hmm. And they didn't build any value in themselves. So when a customer calls, you need to build up the agency and you need to build up yourself as why would they want to buy their business from you? Why do they want their insurance with you? What makes you so special and your agency so special? And you want to build rapport throughout it. You don't want to interrogate the client So you want to make it more like a comfy conversation. So you need to have those little touch points in your process. So everybody is doing it the same. So it is like a well-oiled machine. You want your agency and your staff and your salespeople to do it like a well-oiled machine. And when you do it that way, it's going to improve the look of your agency to the public. And it's going to help with retention because you're building that and you're doing it properly from the start because you only get one first impression with those customers. So make it a great first impression. And, you know, let's say that that customer calls back. And if you guys have that that processes and procedures for your online, your new business, the agent's going to know how to handle it and how to process that and how to move it forward. Let's say the person won the lottery at lunch, they're going to be able to just move forward with that new business process with that customer. Yeah. So Stephen, so understanding, defining the process, understanding new business insurance process, what do you think? I think that we need to, again, like Teresa was talking about, really have those key stages, the prospecting and rapport building. We need the pre-qualification and make sure they're a good fit. But then we need to get deeper into how are we going to present the quote and just emailing it is not the right decision, friends. We're just going to break that, break that myth right here, right now. And then how are we going to get it closed? Like, what is the great process to get there? And I think we need to really define the four major stages, prospecting, qualifying, proposals and closing. Otherwise, we're just wasting time. I think we also need to look at what are the objectives of the agency and what are our sales goals and where are we hitting or not hitting so that we can focus on some additional training or tweaking our processes if that's where we're failing. I like that. I also think, you know, one of the best things about having a really good new business process is 
recycling of leads. We go into so many agencies and the producers make no outbound phone calls. They just wait for the, they aggressively wait for the phone to ring. Hope is their absolute strategy. They're not doing a lot of marketing. There's not like a marketing team member. They're out like generating buzz in the community. They're just waiting. And I'm always like, okay, but these like people who don't buy, the monoline customers, the unsold quotes that were good, why can't we go back after them? Like we need a very concise, well-oiled machine to get that up and going. And I, I don't know. I'm, I'm always curious. Why do you guys think that people don't work a new business process to recycle those leads? So you don't have to go ahead and get more, 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 right? Like if I had a list of 30 qualified people to call every month, that sounds awesome. I think it's because, yeah, they're scared or they're like, well, they already said no. Why would I call them again? And some producers. So busy. <laughs> and some, like, I'm thinking of a few agencies I've worked with in the past, and the phone rings aggressively enough that the producers are comfortable. Their base, along with whatever little commission they're making, they're comfortable at, but it's not actually profitable for the agency. So they're like, what do you mean? I did four quotes today. I don't have time to call anybody. I'm like, you literally did four quotes today. <laughs> and it was like, for things, <laughs> like literally for things, you did exactly what the client requested and turned it into a whole ordeal. You didn't think outside the box. You didn't ask for additional lines. You literally just asked questions and then spend an hour quoting when we could have done a lot more or built a better relationship or streamlined some things. The readers you emailed the, even. But then you just email the quote and then wait for a reason. Let me know if you want to move forward. I don't want to be aggressive. I'm I don't. I want people to like me. So I think, again, I make light, but it's because it's real life, my friends. So I think we really just need to be a little more clear in why and set the expectation. And I love when we do job descriptions for producers and we're like, or anybody on a sales team, and we're like, you're going to make X amount of outbound calls every week. And it's like five canceled, five, whatever, five, whatever. And we're giving them lists and then they start writing more business. Well, and I think it's also, you have to do it consistently. You can't just start making yeah. outbound calls, you know, and then hope for the best and then get crazy. But I think some other things that need to be in your new business process, the qualification of leads, what to walk away from. Okay. And producers want to make money. And a lot of them will write not great business because they never have talked to it again in a big, meaningful fashion. So it is so critical that you identify this and be very clear. And my, my vote is you do not pay commission if it doesn't meet the standards. So great. You just worked for free. Have a nice day. Mm. My two cents, you know, and then we get into like, but they're nice. Nice is not profitable. <laughs> okay. Like, Unless you're running for the nonprofit charity, that's great. Go help. Go be nice to people. I think also understanding how to present the quote and what to say when you close. Again, I think the problem you have and why you need a sales process is everybody thinks that we all buy the way that we buy, right? So Stephen, me and Therese all buy differently, okay? Like if I am a good salesperson, I'm on the spot. doesn't matter the price. I'm like, you got me hook, line, and sinker. The easiest person to sell sometimes is a salesperson. You know, where Therese might research it and spend like a week or thinking about it and writing a spreadsheet. And I don't know if she does this or not. I'm just thinking out loud <laughs> and being like, OK, so she'll go on on Facebook groups. Like, do you like this product? What does everybody have as feedback? And then when she walks in there, she doesn't even talk to me. She knows what she's buying. <laughs> and then like Stephen probably just walks in and says, I think I'm gonna buy a car today and just walks in and says, what do you got? <laughs> I'm like, I like that one. It's like, is it pretty? It's pretty. I'll buy it. <laughs> I'm like, I like the color. Can I sit in the seat? No, I don't need to drive it. Okay, I want it. Right. So everybody buys differently. The point is, is like people always buy the same and a sales process helps you amend that and adapt that, right? And then utilizing technology. When you have a process, you can tell people what technology to use. I can't tell you how many agents we go into. They have like Canopy Connect or they have the Reader or they have a proposal software or they have a million and one things. And guess what? Nobody's using the technology, the technology. and part of that is training, but part of that is a leadership role. It's like three parts, right? Making them comfortable with it, a accountability to do it, and then understanding how this is going to benefit them. But I swear if we could in insurance, we'd still be on abacuses. <laughs> All right. You're I want my triplicate forms and my Todd Brighter back, Kelly. Yeah, exactly. And so like kicking and screaming, we're forced into reality. So it was simpler when I had my short rate wheel. Yes. And then you're going to go out and measure the property next too, right? Uh-huh. 
And that, and by the way, all that is fine, but it should be in your process. If you want to operate that way, let it be in your process. <laughs> okay? like, just make sure everybody's doing the same way. It's not fair that if I call Teresa, I get one experience, Steve, and I get another one, right? So that is right. the whole goal, name of the game that we're talking about too. So let's do what we've been doing. What are the three reasons you think everybody needs a new business process? I'll let Steven go first this time. I think it's because it gives everybody clarity on what the expectations are to follow, to get the sale done. Mm. How about you, Therese? Uh, strategies, consistency, and higher closing ratio. Oh, that's good. That's good. I'm going to say that my biggest reason I think everybody needs to do it is leads are expensive. Like whether it's a referral that's getting generated, you're marketing out in the community, you're sponsoring stuff, you're attending stuff. And I think we all need to identify that if left to our own devices, I would build a sales process that benefited me. And we need to have a sales process that benefits the opportunity and what's important to them and getting to know them and identifying if you can help them and all of those things. And I think going back to what I said originally, we have a quote process. We don't always have a what rapport questions to build, like how to make the person feel comfortable. Do we present the quote on a Zoom meeting? Oh, the horror of having to get on a video call with a customer. Mm. And I love it because when I talk to agents about it, they're like, I would never do that. I'm like, why? <laughs> why would you never do that? Back in the day, people used to come to us. We'd sit face to face, breathing on each other. This is the most traditional thing you can do. It's just done with an internet connection versus having to get in your car and go places. And I think if you're really like, oh, I don't want to see myself. They're not going to like it. You don't know. Ask. But if it increased your closing ratio 15%, would it be worth it? Mm -hmm. If you people that don't want to do that, guess what? They're not salespeople. Because if you told a salesperson that they could increase their closing ratio 15%, they would wear a clown suit if you asked them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, or they're judging it before they even try. What's the harm in trying, right? So I think people just have to get into the habit of the leadership picks the process and it's the team's responsibility to execute, right? So if they need a new business process, Stephen, where can they go? ABB, we got it for you. We do. And we have scripts. We have follow-up templates for emails. We have all sorts of fun stuff. So don't hesitate, okay? Don't delay. Just make it all happen. You all be great. And at the end of the day, I think, you know, the, the biggest thing that we need to focus on is the fact that there should be a process and a procedure in place. And without that, you can't train new people everybody's going to be doing something different. You're going to have a varied result where for me, if I want to grow, I want to lock that shiz down. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it. Check out our process pack um, launching this month on new business. And now we're going to talk about renewal process next. Ooh, ooh, it's a juicy, juicy. I game. love a renewal. That's good. Cause we're going to make sure we talk about it next. <laughs> All right. We'll see everybody in the next episode. <laughs>